and then there we go. And then uh, maybe we just do a really quick introduction about the three DAOs that are involved, and then Chloe can take it away if that's it's okay. Or you prefer to wait a bit longer for people? What do you think? Silence. I take. Oh, for me, I, I'm good either way. Uh, okay. So up to you, Marlon, if okay. you want to wait for more people. But if it's recording, I'm I'm good. To yeah, go. I think we we can start now. Okay. Nice. What do you think? Yeah, sounds good. Um, okay, so hi everyone, welcome to this workshop. Um, so basically, Motion DAO, Muti DAO, and Mama J uh, decided to give a DeFi workshop uh, in terms of DeFi and how DAOs can use it. So my name is Tabea. I'm from Muti DAO. We're based in Portugal. We support artists. We do physical events and residencies, and we're also we're trying to become a self-sustainable DAO. This is why this is very important for us as well. I remember when the motion DAO came up, actually, so it's quite nice to see that now we're doing something together. Um, and yeah, Marlon, go ahead, explain a bit motion and then let's go. Thank you, Tavera. And uh, well, it's, an, it's an really an honor to be doing this kind of share events. I think it's also a way of figuring out what we can do. And, uh, and, and there is some trade, not, you know, there's not know-how, there is also the possibilities of understanding, you know, how this flows, so value flows pass in this uh, ecosystem and how can we help each other out. So Motion DAO, we have been together approximately for a year and a half and in the New York ecosystem since last September. Uh, and we are part of the, you know, the ecosystem of the creative DAOs and, and it has been an amazing, incredible support. and. Uh, and our goal is to kind of create, a, uh, generate context for investigation and inquiry about the Web3 for artists uh, from a kind of fully embodied per perspective of the practices, but also can go from, uh, how I say, from flying sports in nature to generative code. So it can go to, you know, and a lot of our artists work in that uh, very uh, broad uh, spectrum uh, and welcome. And thank you so much. Thank you, Chloe. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so myself, I'm Chloe, co-founder or you know of the Marma J Foundation. My wonderful fiance Bianca uh, is the other co-founder. She takes care of all of the creative and visual aspects of what we do. Uh, so if you head to marmaj.org, you can kind of see all the things we do. But generally, we just try and leverage Web three tech for social good. Um, and so from my standpoint, it's just spreading love and positivity. Um, and I, ooh, there's the construction behind me a bit, so that'll happen as I talk. But uh, so I'm just kind of here to try and provide support in the ecosystem. Uh, that kind of led me to create the Marma J DAO. So if you've not seen it before, we have the Marma J uh, Sputnik DAO or Astro DAO and we under the Marma J Foundation. And we use this DAO again, just to leverage Web3 tech for social good and manage our uh, Web3 assets. So yeah, I'm here today to talk about, you know, uh, DeFi on Near and a little bit of like how DAOs can maybe start interacting with DeFi. Uh, with the Marma J DAO, as you kind of saw, we have quite a plethora of tokens. Um, and so we've got like Near tokens, Meta, Cucumber, uh, tokens from other DAOs like HackDAO and, uh, so on. I've made tokens for my dog. Um, we have a bunch of Marma J tokens for our community. We have XREF. We have a uh, liquid staking token. So a bunch of different things, maybe some terms you've not heard of before as well uh, in this kind of, in our DAO treasury. But that's what we're going to be kind of talking about. Not only how you as an individual can start having a plethora of tokens in your wallet, right? Like I have a bunch myself, but how as a community, um, communities can start owning many different types of assets in the near ecosystem and maybe on other ecosystems as well, like Aurora mm -hmm. and so forth. So uh, anyone who has questions as we go along, uh, please feel free to uh, put them in the chat. Um, I will kind of check the chat as I go and answer the questions live. Mm -hmm. um, if you'd like to raise your hand and, and ask a question like audibly, please feel free to do that as well. Um, and maybe to Tabea and Marlon, if you can kind of uh, help me organize that part of things, that'll be helpful. Um, oh, that's, uh, 
whenever we're good to go, just let me know and, and I'll get started with the workshop. We, we good? Every, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so this is the near wallet, uh, wallet.near.org. And so if you have a near wallet, please feel free to go to this on a separate screen or you can just watch along as I do think that's totally fine. I will be back as I've heard to do more workshops. So you can kind of follow along for today and we'll get there. Generally, when getting started, um, in my opinion, once you've kind of logged in, you can kind of hit this Explore DeFi tab. And that's a great way to kind of see what's available on Nier. And then you're going to see a bunch of stuff. Um, and in my opinion, it's probably a bit too much stuff to start worrying about. Um, but just to kind of go over some of these main applications that you will see, uh, we have the Rainbow Bridge, uh, which connects Ethereum and Nier. So there's multiple blockchains in the ecosystem. Uh, so there's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Near, and like I kind of talked about Aurora as well uh, in you know earlier. And so the Rainbow Bridge is this piece of technology that allows you to like lock up tokens that were originally from Ethereum, and then you get to mint them on Near. Yeah. So that's kind of how that works. We can go into more detail if people have questions about the Rainbow Bridge. Ref Finance is a decentralized exchange, and that's kind of what I was showing here. So ref.finance. It allows you to then launch an application, which is called app.ref.finance. And now we can actually log in with our near accounts. Mm -hmm. So if I log out, for example, you will see this page here where you can connect your near wallet. So now we're actually in the blockchain application. So this is a wonderful uh, website where you can learn more about ref finance, uh, learn more about their roadmap. What, what are they working on? Like parallel swaps, that's super cool stuff. They already have it, single-sided staking. We can go into all this cool stuff that already exists on this uh, platform, and you can see kind of what's coming. We can go into all of this and what it means uh, later on in this talk as well. Um, and that, so that's Ref Finance. It's a decentralized exchange where you can swap tokens. So if you have near tokens, you can swap it for a stable coin, for example. So the past couple of weeks, near's gone from maybe like 15, 16, 18 dollars. I can't remember. Uh, down to I think what? We're at 570 now. Um, and so, for example, being able to swap, right, on Ref Finance. Uh, and be able to take your wrapped near, and let's say you swapped 10 of those, you could get some USN. We will go through that later, don't you worry. Uh, but <laughs> that is a way in which you could uh, sell your near for a stable coin and ensure that you are not at risk to the volatility of the market. There are other risks, and we'll discuss those too. Um, there's Trisolaris. Uh, and so the cool thing about this awesome near website is that at the bottom here of the card, you'll see this N symbol and this kind of triangle green A symbol. Uh, the triangle green A is for Aurora. And that means that this application is on Near and Aurora. So Ref Finance uses Near and Aurora. Trisolaris is another decentralized exchange, but it's only on Aurora. So we can talk about that a little bit later, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, then we have some other applications like Burrow, where you can start getting into stuff like lending. So when you go to a bank and you want a loan, the bank to uh, you know takes some collateral and provides you a loan. You can also do that on the blockchain. And so we can. Uh, so the Marmajay Foundation, the Marmajay, not the Dow yet, but the Marmajay Foundation is experimenting with Burrow and also that Bastion, for example, to deposit some tokens and then lend, earn lending uh, rewards. Need to click Burrow. But as you click these applications on Awesome Near, you will get more information about the application. So in my opinion, a great place to go again, is you start on the wallet, you go to Explore DeFi, that will bring you to this page where you can just scroll through a lot of different DeFi applications that are already launched on Near. As you click one of them, like Ref Finance, you'll then be brought to, for example, it was at $4 a couple of weeks ago, and now we're down to about 54 cents, right? So that's kind of an example where when you're actually using this product, right, and you're looking at the Ref token, so you can search for the token you'd like, and let's say you had 100 Ref tokens, which right here, I might zoom in a bit, actually, because... Uh, I have a really big screen. 
Um, so a hundred ref token is worth $54 currently. Um, and let's say you wanted to make sure you could actually have the money you'd like. Um, it's actually saying it would give you, oh, there you go. Is it fixing itself? There you go. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty slow on updating the UI, but there you go. Uh, you get $54 uh, or 54.31 USN to be specific. There is a difference between saying dollars and saying USN. Um, USN should always be worth one US dollar. That's what they're trying to do with this token. Um, but you know, people could, you know, the if people are aware of like the UST, the Terra Luna ecosystem collapse that happened a couple of weeks ago, um, sometimes not every stablecoin stays at a dollar. And we can discuss why stablecoins stay at a dollar, why they don't stay at a dollar. Um, if people uh, would like. Um, but in my opinion, you can see here how you can then swap some ref tokens for some USN. And then actually, if, I mean, this is getting a little diff complex, but you can see the minimum amount you'll get out of the swap. You can see the rate, a lot of details about the price impact. So this is an AMM, an automated market maker. And so each time one share has, is traded, the price will change a tiny bit. So this is just showing you how much the price is going to change from selling 100 ref for 54 USM. And it even shows you how much the actual pool, we can, we'll go through, again, I'm just showing one route right now. We'll go back and discuss ref in more detail in a second. Um, it take, how much uh, ref tokens are then being taken. So out of 100 ref, 0.883 ref is going to be taken by the pool. And then it shows you the route. So 70% of the REF tokens goes through W near to USN. 30% of the REF tokens actually go get traded through the Marma J token to USN. So the Marma J token has liquidity pools on REF finance. And as people trade, the Marma J foundation, the Marma J DAO is able to earn some liquidity pool, some pool fees like this. So out of this 0.883 REF, the Marma J pool pool number 85 is going to earn 30% of it. It's a lot, I know. Um, but very quickly, um, just to keep that flow going for those that might have an understanding of what's happening, you can actually search this pool right here. So on Ref Finance, you can search pools. Um, if it, It's going very slow. So I'm actually just going to cheat and do it in the URL. So Ref Finance slash pool slash 85. And it will bring up the pool I am talking about. We will go through this again. But this is the pool, number 85 on REF, the 85th pool that was created on the smart contract. It is a Marma J REF pool. So this is the pool that earned some fees. This is the 24 hour volume. You can see how much money's locked. So you can get information about every single pool, right? Every single um, pool of, of tokens and funds that are on this exchange. It's kind of like the stock market. You can look up information about every single that pair that trades in the stock market just by looking on the website here. Okay. So, so, can, I, yes. can I ask you a question? Please do. Um, how, you know, can you explain a little bit more of how it is, why, in a way, you're, uh, we or anybody can add liquidity to a token? Yeah, you know, uh, in a way, yeah. So, and who's doing it, and how has been the part of the experience? Because that's kind of one very interesting aspect of the. Yeah. The so whole I'm gonna spectrum. go. Yeah. So I will go through a full flow of ref specifically. Don't. Uh, I will go through that as well. So, um, so yeah. Is everyone clear though? On like everyone has a wallet here. Hopefully, everyone understands that you can kind of go to Awesome Near. Um, you can kind of scroll through and see a bunch of crazy things uh, on here. Um, as you do go through all these crazy applications, you can learn more about them. They have like news about what's going on and you can start trying out the application. Um, so specifically, um, I'm already logged in um, under some of these applications. And so I'm gonna enjoy explaining it from the farming aspect. So your question, Marlon, if if the website decides to load. There we go. Oh, I'll zoom in a little bit. 
So hopefully everyone can see this and it is clear what's on my screen. Um, so this probably looks like a lot, okay? Uh, and, and it should, there is, so this is the farming part of ref finance. So this is the end usually of what happens on these decentralized exchanges. People add liquidity, um, people are swapping back and forth, trying to either be like, oh my gosh, I think Nier is gonna go down. I want to swap to something stable maybe. And, and you saw how when someone does that, you can go through multiple different pools. And some people are like, oh my gosh, Nier is so inexpensive. I want to buy some, right? So people are going back and forth all the time using these pools. Um, and what Ref Finance does <clears throat> as an exchange is it rewards uh, some of these pools. So as people add to these, they take their tokens. So for example, Marma J token, and the ST near token, right? You take these two tokens, you add them into a pool, right? So if you want to stake, it actually says get LP shares, right? So this is, we're working backwards now, okay? So the end goal is being able to have our tokens in this wonderful farm, right? All these wonderful terms that are just new and crazy. Uh, and we're gonna earn these rewards because this decentralized exchange is rewarding us. That's, that's a lot, right? Uh, so working back from that, it's telling us that um, we need to get some LP shares to join this. And you can see I actually have 22 of them already uh, sitting right here. Um, but with these LP shares, you get them by adding liquidity. So to Marlon, to your question, um, you know, you have to, you'd connect to near, right? So you'd see this button here. Um, oh, sorry, it is going... I have to, because I logged out when I first started. So if you want to add liquidity, it's going to say you have to connect your near wallet. So first thing you do is you pick the web wallet at the top, probably. Um, I've never used sender wallet myself, so I can't speak much to it. Uh, you're going to pay a point. You're, wait, you're not paying anything here. Sorry. You are allowing the app, <clears throat> sorry, app.ref.finance um, to be able to view your address. So Chloe.near is my address. You're allowing Ref to look at that so they can show your data. You're allowing Ref to view the balance of your account so they can show how much tokens you have. And you're allowing your account to like call methods on the contract. So this UI is going to allow your account to call methods. And it's only going to be able to spend 0.25 gas, not actually transfer it, just spend that in like network allowance. So we're gonna connect saying, okay, that sounds good. We're gonna allow ref to do that. Um, and because we've allowed that, now when we're logged in, ref can start showing our information. So as you see it in the top right-hand corner now again, it'll show that I'm logged in as chloe.near. And when I try and add liquidity, it'll show that I have, if I zoom in a bit, It'll show that I have 14 Marma J, for example, right? These are tokens that, for example, if you do a bounty for the Marma J DAO, uh, you can earn some Marma J tokens. And we'll go through that in a second. So make, to make the flow clear. And you can have some tokens like ST near as an example, right? Um, and so generally what I would uh, instruct to do or just what, what most people would do or what I do is you just hit max on one of these buttons, right? And the UI will show you what's going on. So if I try and put all my Marma J in, it'll actually say, sorry, you can't do that. You don't have enough ST near. Okay, so I hit max on the other button. Perfect. The, the UI, the website, will already know exactly how much Marma J I need in relation to the ST near. This is because, as I said, all of these pools are, are already are on the blockchain and you can view them all um, and see the exact rate. So again, I know this pool, it's pool 553. So I can look it up. <clears throat> so this is all the information for the pool. Okay, so there's 11,000 Marma J in this pool. There's about 10,000 ST near in this pool. Um, and it shows you one Marma J is around 0.96 ST near. So if someone wants to add liquidity and they put in one Marma J, it will be 0.59 ST near. It's just information from the blockchain where what, what is the rate of this token? What is the cost? And that's how much you're going to have to put in. If I want to put 10 Marma J, it's just going to make it more. If I want to put 100 Marma J, so for example, 
right? I could look back here and I know there's 11,032 Marma J. And so uh, 320. So it'll show you exactly the amount or around there, uh, what, 10,850 and yeah, 10,850. Okay, so it's just showing you exactly based on what's the pool, that's how much you'd have to add. So when I hit max here, which that's the rate I'm seeing, I hit add liquidity, right? It's, so every time you make a transaction on the blockchain, you're gonna have to pay some gas fees, right? You're gonna have to, that's what the near is for. So it shows that this is my account. I have a little bit of near here. These are my fees, right? Point is less than 0. 0.00001 near. Uh, so the fees aren't much. But you see this here as well. You do have to put up 0 0.01 near uh, to be able to sign the transaction. That is for storage and other costs as well. So I'm gonna hit approve, okay? And we can dig into what happened here as well, specifically Marlon, um, because in this wallet that we looked at, Every time you do a transaction, so we're gonna refresh the wallet, see how long that takes, hopefully not too long. Okay. I'm just gonna hit view all actually, cause I don't feel like waiting that long, but eventually it will show here, but I'm just gonna load it. Um, it's taking a long time to go through here as well, but that'll happen as well. It'll eventually, the wallet will, redirect back to refinance. I'm just opening up pages so we can look into the transaction. Okay, so now we've added liquidity, um, but it, so we cannot add any more because actually we do not have any more ST near. That 0.64 is now gone. Now we actually have pool shares, okay? So you can see there's 8.96 thousand pool shares. Uh, Chloe.near, I'm logged in. It'll tell me how many shares I have. I have 646 pool shares. And if we dig into the Explorer, so this is for Chloe.near's account. So we're getting kind of into the whole analytical side of things now. If you want to dig into a transaction, I don't know what went wrong. I did something here. I thought I made a swap. Why is it the money where I thought it was? Um, I always come here. So you can see everything you did. Uh, so you can see here, I logged into Ref Finance and I added um, a new uh, access key, right? You can see that I added liquidity, right? Which actually is three transactions. Uh, it is a send of ST near. It is a send of Marma J token. And then it adds liquidity. So this, we're getting a little bit into some technicalities here. Um, but the last transaction, the add liquidity transaction is where I would look. I would click this link on the right-hand side and you can see, look, it succeeded. Okay, um, this was what the 0 0.01 near, that's what it was for. That's why I had to pay some more. Um, but I only paid this 0 0.000 whatever, that's the actual fee. And you could see right here, pool number 553, we went through that already. That was the pool on Ref Finance, pool 553. We could see the amounts we put, remember the 0.65 ST near, the 0.68 Marma J. And again, we can see that here, if we put 0.68, we'll see 0.65, that's all seems correct. And then we actually have to keep looking. And then here's some results. Okay, so we know, it actually even writes it out for you. I love, so if you're ever a developer, you'll see this is pretty cool because, and maybe I'll actually share this one in the chat so people can look at it. And yes, you can use Ref Finance to trade your own, your own token. You can create your own token like I did with the Marma J token or with, I'll show you another token that I actually use just for fun. Um, and you could trade with that as well. And so you can see we actually minted this many shares. Um, and so when I go to farm, I, have, I had 22.8 shares, right? Before I did this. When I refresh the page, it will now show that whenever this happens, I have more than 22.8 shares um, because I just added 0.55 um, shares. And then I will work back from here as well, Marlon, don't you worry, all the way to token creation, all the way back to the wallet. So if I wanna stake those shares, as you can see, now it's increased. I now have 20, 
three shares, and you can see that 0.55 shares that I just made, there's no, even an ROI calculator. So you could see that for 0.55 shares, you will earn 14 cents just about in seven days. And these are the different various tokens you'd earn, yada, yada, yada. And so you could see for the entire amount. And there you go, I would stake them. Sure, let's do it. Again, you're gonna see how much near it costs. You can always look at more information as well. And if you're getting really technical, you can see the function. So again, if you're ever doing a DAO proposal, where you're, where, where you're getting into custom function calls. Here it is. Here's the contract you need. Here's the function name. Here's the arguments. It even shows you how much Terra gas it uses and then the one Yocto. So it shows you all the information in the wallet. Okay. Now, working back from here and doing it a little quickly, you have tkn.farm. So I can share this in the chat. Here you go. Now, again, all the tokens that I've created are all for experimental reasons. Um, nothing here is financial advice. And we created the Marmor J token, for example, last year in a hackathon just to experiment with token economics, community sustainability, and all of these ideas. Um, but as you can see, you can log into this application right here. Uh, you could say, you know, workshop, uh, let's call it. I'm going to say workshop token. Symbol is going to be uh, MarmaJ workshop. There you go. So MarmaJ workshop.tkn.near will be the smart contract name. I could do 987654322. You know, I can make some crazy number of tokens that I want to mint. Uh, I guess this is probably the max number because it the UI made me do this. So the UI won't let you do a higher number than this. Okay, so that's the max number of tokens you can mint. Um, you can do 24 decimal places, for example. So you near allows 24 decimal places. Ethereum uses 18 decimal places. The Marma J token uses 18 decimal places. ST near uses 24. So if anyone's wondering, hey, on ref finance, can I pair two tokens that have different decimals? Yes does not matter whatsoever what the decimals are. It's just like if you go, so if you make a token with 24 decimals and then you take that token over to Ethereum, it might not work right away with Uniswap, for example. You might need to then have a wrapper contract on Ethereum that people can then deposit these tokens with 24 decimals into a wrapper, have wrapped near token, and then that would have 18 decimals and work with Uniswap as a complex example. But in my opinion, just put 18 in there like it already shows and you'll have no problems. Um, you upload an icon, so you can literally just uh, pick whatever icon you'd want off the computer. So there you go. That's how we picked the Marma J logo. We just put up one of our mosaics. Uh, and this is the owner account. I've never tried changing this, but for example, if you wanted, if you wanted to have a token for your DAO, uh, I would assume, I again, that you could do this and just put your DAO in there. The reason that I didn't do this, ooh, that's, ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's see. It, nope, you cannot do that using the UI because it will not allow multiple decimal places. Uh, so there is a way around this, but that's okay. I'll show you in a second. Um, let me just do this first. Okay, now it doesn't like what I'm doing, but that's okay. This seems to allow it to work, which is not a real account, by the way, but don't worry about it. It was a hackathon project for this token. So again, this is experimental. This was a hackathon project from a year and a half ago, but it is a great way to start experimenting with how tokens work and decentralized exchanges. So you can create your token right here for 2.23 near. If you make your contract name longer, it'll cost you a bit more, but you can see here, the Marmaj token was created right here with a 21,019 token supply. Decentricity made a token, there's a beer token, a hack, a hack token was made here. Uh, Blaze, the, the rim job token. You can see that there's many tokens throughout the community that are trading AVB, who you might know from, and there's pages and pages of these tokens um, <clears throat> that you can look up. So if I look at my tokens, uh, oops, page one. 
You'll also see I made a token for my dog. So I made the Mika token, the Mikasa token. She's named after the Attack on Titan character, if you know of her. Uh, and I named it Mikasa. Sorry, quickly. The reason I did not put the, the Marmajay Dao here back in the good old days was because back then we didn't have a uh, V2 Sputnik Dao or V3. We only had V1s and we didn't have the ability to do all these custom function calls. But here you go. You can make a token for whatever you'd like. You could then go to view the pools on Ref Finance. Uh, and I'll actually wait for it to load this time because I actually need to use the, uh, the search bar. Um, but you could see there are actually quite a few Mika pools. Uh, and so we have the Mika to die pool for a stable token. We have the Mika W near pool so that there's some near uh, trading. And we have the Mika Marma J pool. And they have about you know 10 to 30 bucks in them. And so if you want to analyze these pools, so I'll share the link here. Two tokens cannot have uh, the exact same name because they're smart contracts on near, but you could have marmaj.tkn.near be a token. You could have marmaj.token.near, marmaj. I think this is cool. Near. You could have marmaj.near. You could put a token on Marlin. Near. Uh, any uh, account on near can be a smart contract, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, so if you look at stats.ref.finance, you can kind of look into any token. So you can look up the Mika token and start seeing, so no volume, sadly, recently, there's not enough uh, volume there, but you can look at the Marma J token, for example. So Marlin's question about token economics and how much funds are there. Um, token economics for the Marma J token specifically um, have to do with always having enough Marma J to distribute for proposals um, and supporting the near ecosystem as widely as we can. Um, so that's why we hold most of our liquidity in ST near, um, but we did not sell when the tokens prices were dropping. We just kind of hold all the way down, uh, end up buying back uh, ST near and letting the community get back their tokens if needed. But you can dig in quite a bit here and see Again, how much fees has the pool taken? So for example, our ST near pool is not very efficient. Uh, you can see that we have $132,000 locked in the pool or in the pool. And we're only doing $1,000 of volume a day, which actually only earns us $1.69 of pool fees. Where we have another pool, fee, a pool for example, Marma JW near, where we're able to do $30,000 of volume, sorry, $30,000 locked, 1,000, 1, a little bit more volume, uh, and we're actually bringing in a little bit more um, fees. So you can see that if we just moved our treasury around a little bit, we'd probably take in a lot more tokens and fees, but we do like supporting network security and staking as we're holding on liquidity. We also have a farm on REF, which supports this. Um, and then specifically, how would someone then go in? Like, how did we get started? How did we go and say, okay, you know what? Well, first of all, here's the button right here. You go to pools, you go to create new pool. So it is kind of quite simple, I, I will say, uh, but I will show it because seeing it, I think makes it even easier. I made mistakes my first time making pools. And if you look, uh, you can see a few Marmaje pools that have like 21% fees or something like that. Uh, and those were my mistakes. So you could take, you know, you type in here, Marmaje, perfect. And I can say, okay, you know what? We don't have a any Bitcoin exposure yet for the Marma J Foundation. We want to allow community members to earn Marma J tokens, sell some of them for uh, wrapped Bitcoin to have some Bitcoin exposure, and then be able to add liquidity so that they can still, you know, sell some Marma J and earn their bounties, but also keep supporting the Marma J Foundation and our community liquidity. Okay, I always kind of come here. Um, so you can just kind of select what kind of pool fees you want. Again, a higher pool fee will definitely be more efficient for getting a return on your investment. We can kind of dig into some pool, some examples uh, later on, but uh, I've experimented with some pool fees that were like 2.19%, uh, and those were actually quite efficient, much more efficient than and even going to 60%. So if, if someone was doing a community pool here, I would definitely uh, suggest experimenting if this is your uh, thoughts. Uh, so Marlon, again, on token economics and trying to potentially have a token in the future that you might have traded, 
um, like the secret skellies community. Um, and I'll show them because they probably have the most aggressive uh, public pool. Uh, if I can find theirs here, UTO. Um, if I hit stake and I say get LP shares, they have a 2% pool fee from my understanding. And if you, if you dig into it and you kind of look into it, you can see how, uh, again, with $150,000 locked, which is similar to um, you know, the Marmor J uh, token, they're doing $5,000 of volume. So doing more because it's all wrapped near instead of being ST near. So you can instantly see how uh, being pegged to W near instantly will give you more volume than being pegged to say ST near or some other non near token. Um, and then just to kind of finish it off, if you do look at the stats for UTO, you'll see that with that, they're bringing in $77 uh, a day for their community. So, I mean, $77 a day with, a, with $100,000 in there, you can probably put out some good bounties. Uh, you're earning 19% uh, a year, which is more than most banks are giving most people. And so as like a soccer team, for example, as a community organization, as an association, um, if you found a way to have, uh, for example, your community token, um, ah, if I can get this to uh, be pegged to something like USN, for example, like a stable coin, instead of being pegged to something volatile like near, and you were able to earn a reasonable APR, so not uh, so Marmaj USN has a 0.19% fee. We pretty much give money away to the traders who are trading within the token. Um, but if the community had a 2% fee, for example, and was pegged heavily to a stable coin, potentially they'd be able to make something like 20% APR on their community treasury holdings, um, where members of the community were able to come and go as they pleased, um, earn bounties in the community token and have some stability with a stable coin like USM. So the Marmor J Foundation and community specifically uh, doesn't focus on stability much, to be honest, we focus on community support. But we've been talking actually to the, the Muti Dao and to Bea about eventually coming out with a template that's more geared towards uh, a treasury management system that's more geared towards stability. So um, more heavily invested in USN. So for example, you can see the Marma J Dow heavily invested more into ST near W near ETH pixel token. And then like our USN holdings are kind of fifth place where if a community was focused heavily on sustainability and long-term growth, you'd probably want to see their USN pool be their number one pool, to be honest and maybe even have multiple stablecoin pools. So for example, if you look at the Pixel token community, um, yes, they have their main pool as the W near token because that's the most uh, volume. They have a farming token with REF because that's where they can get community support in decentralized finance. Uh, then I, uh, the Marma J community made uh, the Marma J PXT pool, but then most of their other pools are all stablecoin pools. Um, so that they can continue to have long-term growth and the APRs do quite well. And as you can see, um, at 0.5%, they're bringing in about 6% APR. At 0.19%, even with more, three times the amount of value, we're not, we're bringing in 16 cents. Um, so it's quite a drastic difference. And with three times more funds and way less in fees, um, and then you can just kind of dig into those things as well as you go. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives, I mean, that was, I know a lot from, you can go from creating your own token. Um, I know I didn't kind of finish it up this specific flow yet, but we went from kind of creating your own token. Uh, right now I'm kind of going through, if you created your own token, um, how would you go about creating your own pair? It's, it's honestly just clicking this button right here. Um, you click create and it just does it. Um, uh, so, but I will go through what it looks like on the wallet. So if I would, again, I think 2% is a very um, reasonable fee, at least for community building. Um, and it, for community building, I could even see uh, communities going above that. So the Marmor J Foundation, we are experimenting in the future with some pool fees at 2.19, for example, um, just for, uh, yeah, basically for, um, like education and community like charity support. And then you go hit create. 
Um, the beautiful part about Near is that you always go to the wallet first. So I always feel safe clicking that button. Uh, don't click that big approve button yet. Uh, but this little button here that says more information is a wonderful one because we're going to kind of transition for the next 14 minutes into what does it look like to start experimenting with DeFi from your DAO. Um, and so here we go. If I called the contract v2.refinance.near and I sent a little bit of gas, uh, a little bit of fees, right, and a little bit of gas, uh, and I call the function add simple pool, and I use these arguments right here, it will create a pool on Ref Finance with 2.19% fee from marmaj.tkn.near to wrapped Bitcoin, okay? It's, and th the reason it has factory.bridge.near is because wrapped Bitcoin came from Ethereum. <clears throat> it got locked in the Rainbow Bridge like I talked about earlier, and it got reminted on near. So this is kind of the contract address for wrapped Bitcoin and then dot factory dot bridge dot near. So Marlon, uh, and actually a very cool thing happens on near with Solana tokens, I think, because there's multiple bridges um, on near and each bridge has their own address. So <clears throat> when you say can the same token uh, be on near, you can actually have five different Solana tokens on near because there, you know, there could be different bridges bringing the tokens to the chain, which gets really complex and uh, can cause a lot of issues actually. But as we go now to the DAO side of things, so if anyone has any questions about um, you know, how to create a token, you could do it on tkn.farm. If you wanna know how you can create a pool, you honestly just come to uh, app.ref.finance slash pools slash add, and you can get to it. After you have your pool, um, you're able to add liquidity, just like I showed earlier. You come here to any pool, right? You hit add liquidity. The, the smart contracts will always keep the amount that you need. They do the calculations for you. So if you type in 10, it knows exactly the amount of W near that you need, even though I don't have any. It, it'll say I don't have enough and it won't let you click it, but it will know for you. After you've added, you'll have some shares, okay? And once you have some shares, you can kind of come here and you hit the stake button. And if you don't have any shares, like I don't have any, you can get some. Uh, but if you do have some shares, you can say, hey, I got 10 of these things. And it'll start showing you, okay, if you have 10 shares in seven days, you'll get this type of rewards. Here, I think it says 1.9 uh, thousand US dollar value. It'll show you how much ref you get, how much of these Skelly's tokens you'd get. And then, um, I will show you what it looks like after. I kind of, I did this already, I kind of claimed. So as you stake, right, you're gonna get these rewards, okay? It's gonna keep ticking up. So I have 29 cents in this call that I've made here. I didn't claim this one yet. So you hit claim. When you hit claim from this farm, the UI will refresh and the claim reward section on the top left will increase. So it says 684 previously, and now it should say some other number, hopefully above 684. There you go, 7.35. It tells you how many farms you're in. There's a bunch of tokens that you've received here. And then if you do not have a ledger, you can go ahead and click max five tokens and it'll randomly select five. Uh, I generally try and pick the five that have the highest value because that makes the most sense since you're paying gas. You hit withdraw, it'll go to the wallet, and you go through the flow. Again, if you want to get more information, you'll see it's actually calling five different functions, not one function, it's calling five different functions. Um, it is calling for this token, for this amount, and it's not gonna unregister. You don't have to dig into all this stuff. Um, yeah, so for how to list the token on ref, that's what I was showing here. Create new pool. Oh, you mean like listing them? That's a ref uh, process. So you go through ref, like every single DEX would have their own process of how to get a token listed on the UI. Uh, for ref finance, you need to have, you don't need to have, but they prefer you have over $100,000 in liquidity, you have reasonable trading volume, and you have a community that's using the token. Um, that's like the general uh, scope. Uh, Tabea has a question though. 
Yeah, hey, sorry. Um, I was just getting back to the question that Marlon asked in the beginning, because I also, I'm not aware of how many people actually know what is staking, what, what is farming. So he was asking, why would someone actually add liquidity to, the, to a pool? Like, why would you actually do this? So maybe yeah. if you could explain why and what might be the risk. Uh, why yeah, for going sure. To... So we definitely didn't go over the risk too much. And they actually have, I think I like ref because they actually have this risks button. So I will go through that in a second. Um, but honestly, the main reason of joining a farm is on one side, the economic incentives and rewards from these uh, rewards, which I just, for example, I earned $7.35, uh, which you can then claim, um, you know, and get into your wallet and then use in other ways. Um, so this is the Marmon J pool, for example, if people add liquidity, uh, it'll show right here, for example, the pool fee is 0.59% per year, arguably, right? Um, that's all, it's compounding every, after every trade, so maybe compounding every couple minutes. Um, and there's a rewards APR. APR just means annual uh, percentage rewards or annual percentage yield, how much you're getting per year. And the rewards per year is then 92% if the pool continues per year. So we can go into the risk side in a second, because again, that all might all sound very fancy and very nice. Um, but the main purpose is, you know, you deposit your pool shares, you're able to claim these tokens in rewards, and then you're able to kind of come back to ref finance, swap them, for example, to a stable coin or to other tokens in the ecosystem um, to get involved there. Um, so I know we didn't touch on staking too much. I don't think we even got into staking too much. We've kind of only focused on like, what is a DEX and how you might use it and what is farming and the flow. Um, and so there's like a bunch of like stuff here. Um, I will, so I'll share like the general, uh, what like ref would say about the risks. Um, but I think, here we go. Um, this is probably where I would consider the most reasonable risks that like people need to think about as they might even think about using an exchange like Ref Finance. So again, in my opinion, this is sort of a workshop. So these are all links. You can click right away. You can start logging in. You can start testing them slowly. Um, but in my opinion, like the systemic issues that could happen when you put your funds into these applications uh, are real and they're things that you need to worry about. Um, so when you first use ref, okay, so I'm gonna approve this transaction and let it go through, um, but you'll see everything I'm approving is on app.ref.finance where we're interacting on this certain application. And this right here is the near wallet and they're different. I think that's you know very important to explain and understand. Um, and so once you log into another application and you start doing things there, you actually have to take your near and wrap it. So that's kind of, you know, so the first step, and we didn't even go there yet because I wanted to make sure we go through everything else first, uh, which took, did take quite a while because, you know, I didn't know what level we were at here. Um, but the first step would be taking your near, uh, your harder near that you have, that's uh, Arguably, the safest way you can have it is here in your wallet, uh, not earning any staking rewards, not being used for network security, but being owned by your private keys. So you have this password to access your account. It is yours. This is the safest place to have your new. Um, if you'd like, and then again, the question you asked, Marlon, why would someone farm? Uh, it's because, well, here you're earning 0% per year, whereas in these farms, you're able to earn 200%, 93%, and so on. Um, and then the other aspect of why is because you can support the ecosystem of the token. So, you know, by adding tokens to the PXT farm, I can support Pixel Token and the Ref communities. By adding to the Marma J farm, I can support the Marma J and ST near ecosystems while also earning some tokens in return. So it's a, the ability. Um, no, so farming and adding liquidity are separate things. Um, do you advertise the pools created by Marmor J for other people to add a group B? So I'm maybe you could be more specific about advertise. I'm not sure specifically what you mean by advertise. 
Yeah, um, no, what, what I'm what I'm saying is like if if you create a pool, mm -hmm. um, the way of increasing the liquidity in that pool is that people know that also know that exists, you know. So then, yeah, is there a way that Varma J does, uh, you know, to kind of to make this known uh, as, uh, no. as a strategy? If people okay. would like to enter the farm, they can do so. And in my opinion, earning earning ninety three percent uh apr should be incentive enough for for people to want to join uh, and quite a few people uh, have joined the farm um and so that's kind of the idea that people that want to support in this way will do so um and people that don't join the farm uh will not do so we, we also do have um the marmaje token as a reward in the main ref w near farm and so the marmaje dow sends some marmaje here and so there's thousands of people in this farm who receive Marmaje tokens uh, daily. Um, and then that, so if specifically, you know, how, you know, uh, thousands of people hold Marmaje, if they'd like to continue farming with it instead of selling it, they can join the farm here or they can just sell it and that's totally fine as well. Um, and then we just work to add more tokens to the rewards. So for example, for June, we're planning to add USN and Aurora tokens to the farm. So we'll have eight total tokens in our farm. Um, so we just kind of keep adding, keep supporting different communities and showcasing what's possible. Um, yes, and I think the other question was, was farming uh, the same as uh, like state, uh, putting funds in a pool? Um, no, farming is specifically what you would see here uh, in the farming section. Uh, and then like there's, yeah, it's, it's uh, pools would be everything here what you have on liquidity, creating pool and viewing pools. And then the farming section specifically is how you would take your pool shares and deposit them for farming rewards um, to earn additional rewards. So and as you can see here, it kind of shows it as well. There's a pool fee and a rewards fee uh, amount. And there, there are different amounts that you would earn from entering the pool. Not every pool has a farm. Um, most pools don't have farms. There's thousands and thousands of pools and probably like 80, uh, 20 or 30 farms probably. Um, and if there are any other questions, <clears throat> I can dig into those specifically. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, Chloe, I just wanted to understand yes. um, how does uh, Marma J token at the end of the year when they give an APR of uh, uh, 200%? Um, what um, this has been a question since a very long time, you know, when I'm trying to understand uh, staking and farming. Um, what uh, fundamentally gives value to these tokens? Like, how, how is it that, that those tokens? Yeah, generate? so there's, there's no AP, oh. there's no like end of the year. Uh, the APR is distributed every second. Okay. Um, so when I go back to farms, for example, like I just claimed during this call. Um, and so if I go to my farms, uh, this one will be, will be very low. I've earned 0.227 pixel tokens. Uh, and I've earned, mm -hmm. like, you could see there's point. 216 PXT, there's 0.216 uh, meta. Um, hmm. And so you just come here to swap. Uh, I earned seven ref. I want, let's say, some W near. I uh, hit max and I swap. And so the value is right here, right? I can go to any exchange in my hometown and sell W near for a couple dollars, right? So yeah. I can go buy a sandwich. I can go buy. Uh, pay my bills, but yeah, continue with like any other questions um, you still have off of that. Can I, I just have like another leg of that question, if that is okay? Oh, for sure. Um, so uh, uh, say for example, in uh, I'm trying to understand um, that in stock market generally, uh, a stock is uh, related to some real world value generated. So mm -hmm. how is that value measured for any token? So there's, Let's me there's a measurement right here, uh, so, for example, by staking REF, you have the opportunity to earn fees during by the protocol. Any REF holders can have a share in the revenue earned by REF finance. So you can, for example, uh, for the REF token specifically, you can look at all the information for REF um, hmm. and see if you're looking for that type of information. Hmm. Does that kind of answer the question for REF's value in terms of relation to its token? It answers for ref, but say if there are other tokens, um, um, say for example, I launch um, 
any token uh, a sahil token mm-hmm. for example yeah um um the value just kind of keeps going up because it's being created more and is that how it works or how does that part work you know i mean what is the what do you mean go, going up sorry so maybe i'm not understanding value going up Chloe, why, can so, I, why, i think it might be the same question that i usually have when it comes to tokenomics actually yeah because i think sure. if someone launches a token in the beginning mm-hmm. this token doesn't have a value if it's not used or if no one puts money in it right mm-hmm. so i assume when you launch a token you or anyone else launches a token from what i understand with my mm. brain is that someone needs to invest in it obviously like put money add liquidity to the farm and then other people would have to have the interest of holding that token buying that token trading the token so i think the way mama j is doing it from what i how i get it and how i work with the system is you obviously add value to it in terms of money real value let's say mm. and then you distribute your tokens to community members because they fulfill a bounty they do a gig all of those kind of things that means the token circulates more and therefore gains on value so i assume that everyone who wants to launch a token in the beginning needs to find some kind of um how do i say in initial investment otherwise the token if it doesn't have a use it will not have a, a value right this is how it works with crypto as well if no one uses near if everyone exchanges near to bitcoin the value eventually is going to drop correct uh right? okay fair enough so uh, as of now um, uh, the token is only uh, valuable when people are holding it or when they believe that the business will do something uh, what value it accrues later will depend on the future correct uh the, the, like the value Jeff? in my opinion the value is here right now sorry so i I'm, i guess my issue is i don't see where the future even comes into play even so before you were talking about uh some sort of at the end of the year or in the future in my opinion the value is this here right now if someone receives a thousand marma j they can come to ref finance and they could sell them all for network security for the near protocol blockchain mm-hmm. right so it takes 100,000 near tokens to be a validator on the near blockchain uh-huh. um and you can get 961 of those near tokens uh if you had 1000 marma j so in my opinion that is where the value cool. for specifically a token mm-hmm. come from on a blockchain or on um a decentralized exchange because everything is connected to w near and near we understand has inherent value as network security we understand mm-hmm. that if you have the ability to get so i actually have let's say 14 uh marma j in my wallet uh and someone understands that okay if, if i have seven marma j doesn't matter what this token name is right this could be uh the crypto not token this could be the xyz token if someone understands that this very second they know in a trust list way on a blockchain they can sell seven of these and get at least right as a, a blockchain will give you a number at least 7.31814454 w near and then mm-hmm. on the blockchain if you trust that you can take those w near tokens and unwrap them um right and get back so 7w near and get back 7 near if you if you trust that then you could believe that uh marma j has some inherent value exactly. because you can get exactly. some near yeah. so i think that also kind of goes to like the risks as well and that's what i was kind of touching on with tabeo's question is that you have to make quite a few uh trust assumptions there you have to uh, get the trust that the marma j token over the next 24 hours won't become worth 0 or 0.0001w near like with the terra luna ecosystem everyone trusted that like for on, in the marma j community we try and make it so that one marma j is always with at least one near and we're doing an okay job in my opinion right um but what happens if tomorrow you wake up and you thought one marma j was always going to be around one near and actually it ends up being worth 0.00001 near or well, then it doesn't matter how much you were earning in farming rewards it could be 200% or 2000% you're still going to lose a lot of us dollar value um so in my opinion a lot of risk can happen initially where what if someone's able to hack the marma j dao um and they're able to get i mean it's not only this much marma j token that's in the marma j dao i'll tell you that 
<laughs> so the Marmajay DAO probably holds at least 80% of the Marmajay token supply. And so for example, if someone was able to hack the Marmajay token, they'd be able to take down the price uh, or if someone hacked the Marmajay DAO, they'd be able to take down the price of the Marmajay token. So there is no security inherently in the Marmajay token. Things could go down quite drastically. Um, when we're talking about risk as well, so if we go back specifically to the risk section, I know we're a bit over time, but I do want to touch on, um, so there could be smart contract issues. So there's already been one on REF quite a while ago where the farming contract could have a huge issue. So all the tokens that are specifically, so Marlin, to your question, uh, is farming the same as pools? No, all of these tokens, so 3.18 million, 10.3 million, dollars, uh, you know, 500,000, those are not even on the same smart contract as REF. They're in a specific different farming smart contract. So there's not only risk with the pools, every time a new farming contract gets created, that could cause extra risk or extra ways that the contract can be exploited. Um, there could be issues with the ERC-20 token. Um, so a lot of tokens are coming over these bridges, for example, like Solana. So what happens if the Mar so Marlin, if your community creates a token, you think, you know what, Solana is a pretty good token. I showed in my example how I might want to peg Marma J to, to WBTC. If someone wants to peg the token to Solana and then Solana goes down a lot, well, then that could also cause a risk to any community's token. So there are lots of risks of even transferring your near from your near wallet and then transferring it into an application like Ref Finance. And again, as you go to this Explore DeFi page, there are all of these applications and every single one of them re requires you to first log in, which means you need to authorize the application to look at your near account and look at the balance and all of that stuff. But then you need to actually move some tokens over when you start testing it out. And so in my opinion, if anyone's going to go through that step of testing things out, you could always create a burner account. Um, so I, I will actually drop a link for how you can create a burner account in the chat. Um, where is it? What is a burner account? So, so the idea of a burner account um, would be that it's just using it for one use or for a few uses or just for like testing out something. Um, so we have some test links for the Marmajay workshop we're putting on soon. Um, and so you can click that link, you can make a new account, it'll have almost no near on it. Um, but you can link it to your email, for example, you can send over 0.5 near, and then you can log into Ref Finance, and then you can start trying out, for example, um, you know, who cares, right? The Rainbow Bridge, you can be like, hey, I've got a tiny bit of near on this brand new account. Maybe I'll click the DAP and maybe I'll try sending some funds over. Uh, you know, we can get into some interesting stuff, sending some funds from, you know, near to Aurora. It's relatively free and we can start talking about other platforms there. So, but yeah, I don't want to go too much, uh, too long over time. If people have, like more specific questions, please feel free to ask. I can go a bit more over ref potentially since that's what we kind of covered mostly today. So just one uh, specific question. Yeah, I think sure. I missed, uh, missed it when you were saying, um, how do we, uh, once we create a token on token.farm, does it automatically get added to ref finance or is there a process to add it? Yeah, so when you, which is a few ways to do it, I guess, um, and they've changed it, so let's see. Ooh. Okay, sorry, I'm lagging a little bit, but actually you can do it when you swap, actually. That's probably the easiest way to do it. We'll do it there. So when you actually go try and swap a token, um, so let's say, okay, you knew you wanted to get W near, but you wanted to swap, it'll actually let you add a token right here. So this is the easiest way to do it. Um, so as you're searching through, you can just hit add token, and then you could type the token address that you have. So if it's uh, you know, crypto not dot tkn dot farm. You click that. You click add token. It will try and do it if it can. Obviously, there's no token <coughs> token like that yet. I do not think. And then when you come here and you type in crypto not, it'll show up. 
every user of your community will have to do that manually for the first time. So for example, the Marma J token community, we used to have guides just to like walk people through, hey, come to Ref Finance. If you want a bounty from our DAO, you know, you know, go to this search bar, go to add token, type in marmaj.tk and uh, near, and then you'll be able to next time when you come through, search marmaj and it'll show up like this. Yeah, glad people are liking the workshop. You're very <laughs> welcome uh, to you. everyone. Um, we can go a lot deeper, but in my opinion, um, like just to quickly end off, uh, if you are looking for some sort of stability that is relatively pegged to the near ecosystem, there is this buy button. So if you do want to test out and have a burner wallet and go through this, you can send 0.5 near to that wallet, for example, just to test things. You can click this buy button um, and you could take, you know, 0.1 near as a test and you can buy some USN. So it, it is this simple to swap back and forth um, from near directly from near to a stable coin on the near blockchain. You can look at the details and see what's happening. The fee is 0.5%, which is a little bit higher. But anyways, uh, you can just do that. So if you want to try it, you can hit 0.1. You can hit swap. It'll redirect to the wallet. And so if you're ever worried about like you received a bounty in near, for example, from your DAO, and you don't know what's going to happen, you need to make sure you have a certain amount of like dollar stable coin value you can always just do that as a simple method of you know making sure you have some stability um then for example you don't have to do any of the crazy swap stuff right the swapping can get kind of uh complex at times and uh, going through you know you, but you can go here you can type usn you know you can see how much of it you have you can swap it back to w near and all of that but you don't have to, okay? And my screen is. You can just. Wish we back. have a. We we would have known that uh, you know a month ago. <laughs> yeah, so you can just go straight here again, right? Yeah, you can hit right. half and go straight back to near. So you don't have to use the wrapping. You don't have to use all this other stuff. You can yeah. just swap directly from the yeah. near in your wallet. And so again, onto what Tabe is talking about risk. You can bypass the ref finance exchange risk. You do still have to deal with USN risk and all of that stuff we can talk about another time. Um, but you can receive a bounty in near. You can swap directly to a stable coin. And then when it's time to get near back, so you can go to a centralized exchange and get your local currency, you can just take that USN. You want you. So you have 100 USN, right? You have $100 US dollar value for this bounty. You can make sure you get whatever value of near that is at the time. And then you can sell it right away on the centralized exchange. And that's what, that's what I do when I need uh, something. Uh, I, I just kind yeah. of swap to USN. But, yeah. I think what yeah. also would be a nice thing because uh, Muti sent motioned out a couple of Mama J's, right? So yeah. maybe you use half of that. You can distribute it in between like your members who are interested for trying it out themselves. I also yeah. left a guide in here that we wrote for the Mama J, um, for the general community, but it's on the Mama J website where people can try to stake Mama J with stake near. So wow. if you have people interested in your DAO, like feel free to forward that and maybe distribute the funds you received from us to try it, like one Mama J, one Nia, just to understand the process. And that guide works for all the other farms as well, like the procedures, basically the same. Yeah. Maybe so, I mean, even what Tabea is talking about quickly, just to even showcase what you would even do, uh, if you had one Marma J, all you'd have to really click is this half button Oh, well, it's going to half of what I have now. Uh, but you hit the half button and it will, you know, put 0.5. And then you'd go to the bottom and you'd say, okay, I actually want ST near. And it will, when it loads, because everyone's using near these days, um, it will automatically tell you how much marmage uh, ST near this is. And there's steps in that guide to walk you through you know, okay, now that I have half Marma J, half ST near, how would I then go about adding to the pool like we showed? Then, then I have pool shares. How do I take those pool shares and add them to the farm to earn rewards? 
and and as you can see um <laughs> this will happen as well i love actually i love, I love not using presentations and using my actual screen this is so much more real uh this will happen to you as you're trying to use ref finance and then it'll load <laughs> That's just because down here you can actually see how many milliseconds uh, it's taking to get data from the blockchain. And so the official RPC is about 500 milliseconds, which is a very long time. Um, it should be around like 30 milliseconds when it's doing well. So if you ever see this RPC number at the bottom at like 500 to 1000 and things are taking a while, don't worry, it's not you, it's just the UI. And next time, we can talk about how to use the CLI to submit a trade if the UI is not working. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, <laughs> that's so advanced. That's great. <laughs> hey, but I mean, this is kind of what we're that's, talking about. It's really though. good. Like, if you have your DAO and you have funds yeah. and the market's tanking and the UI yeah. stops working, you yeah. might still need to make sure that you can get your funds and send them yeah. to. But, one of the so. big big questions that I have is also the the speed of response of the DAO to make these decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, like because for example, sometimes it takes us like three weeks to get the report, two weeks, you know, yeah. things like that. And then so of course yeah, for it's a matter of like who do you have like a committee or a little a group or it's two or two people that make these choices or or strategies just to, to finish that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So quickly, I mean for the Marma J DAO, uh we are quite centralized with our treasury management. I will continue to say that, and we're going to be that way for a little while, uh, especially because we have such a large treasury and the treasury is mostly my own funds that I just give away to people. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, we're being as secure as possible. But as you can see who's voted, we do have our advisor group that's voted as well, and they help us with uh, certain specialties that they have. So, you know, Tabea, uh, has voted on a few proposals uh, showcasing that she agrees with certain things. And so there is ways where you can have a, a core council that actually passes proposals, but you can still have a community that's interacting. And so I think actually Ina V2 has, I think, the most advanced live example of this, where you could actually just have it where uh, you have a core council that votes, but you could have a social understanding that the core council is not actually going to vote on any logic that has not already been passed by a poll. And in the URL to any logic proposal, it can maybe only be two or three people voting. Um, the quorum could be super low. There could be many ways of doing this. Like you have 10 people on the council, but the quorum is 20%. So as long as two people vote, yes, it'll pass. But in the proposal, you could have a, po a poll that has general sentiment from the community. And so you could actually just wait to vote until the poll has reached a certain amount of community support and then go for it and execute the proposal. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, what we do uh, is actually myself, Chloe.near and my co-founder, uh, my fiance, Bianca.near, we try and vote on most proposals, but our third voting member is Marmaj.near, which is a management account, but we only vote with that account on live streams. And so that's our way of trying to be mm. more ac accountable at least. So that <laughs> yeah. when something passes by marmarjay.near, which mm -hmm. is basically just me or my fiance, it's always mm -hmm. done on a live stream. We have recording of it. We're doing oh, it publicly. Oh, wow. So anyone can kind of be like, hey, uh, you shouldn't be doing that. And we're actually there <laughs> with public accountability. But, okay. Wow. That's, that's great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Welcome. Like, uh, thank you also for people who stayed and, and uh, you, Chloe, for keep it keep going and uh i think i get the sentiment that this is very you know i am part, particularly very excited about all the dynamics of this and how it's needed actually mm -hmm. in, in 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 the overall sense of of learning and mm -hmm. the specifics of the of of the near ecosystem so mm -hmm. yeah so thank you yeah, so much sure. Glad thank to you be here and for for to kind of putting all this together you're welcome. I hope people learned or at least got not only overwhelmed, but also curious. I think this is very normal. Um, and for yeah. me, to be honest, I really I really think like use the Mama J that we send you and try to distribute in the community that is interested yeah. in it. And then they can figure it out, not figure it out, but try it out themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Out themselves. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, 
I would definitely suggest, again, uh, try things out yourself. If it seems a bit yeah. scary or risky, make a new account uh, yeah. and try it out there. Um, yeah. you know, with try small it. amounts. <laughs> yes, try with small <laughs> amounts. Uh, if, if any of you know Rebecca, she's the funniest, in my opinion, for the testing with small amounts. I think she owns <laughs> more tokens than I do. So like in my wallet, I have all, I have all these tokens. She probably has yeah. three times more. Uh, so she'll buy tiny amounts of everything. So you could test it out. And uh, please, uh, for the attendance, can you leave your email if you would like to receive a certificate of attendance yeah. so that we will send to you as an NFT? And uh, yeah, so, and I guess if you're here, I have your uh, near wallet. You can also put it here if, if, if it's specific, if you have not put it in the registration form, okay? And I will stop the recording now. Are we cool with that? Yeah, I think we're good to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. And if anyone has any lingering thoughts,